This project combines slow stitching with Quilt As You Go. I'm going to show you how I did it, step by step. I'm going to start by creating the Quilt As You Go squares, and then I'm going to use my backing to create a binding, and then I'm going to stitch four squares together to create this fun pouch. It's an easy, relaxing project that results in a beautiful, functional pouch. Follow along and stitch your own. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get started. I've made myself several squares to take with me on the go. I'm using double gauze in three colors. The fabric size is eight by eight inches and the batting in the middle is six by six inches. I've placed the pieces together and I've basted them in place. You can see my basting stitches here. So there's my batting in the middle of my eight by eight pieces. So I have one inch all around. That'll give me lots of options for how I want to finish these squares. Here's a piece I started working on this rusty red color and I've begun to stitch the running stitch and I've come back in the other direction with some plus signs. I've buried my knot in the batting, so it's not going to show. So the back and the front are both going to be good sides. So when I'm completed stitching, I'm going to have enough fabric to be able to use the backing as the binding. So I would cut the one fabric down to the same size as the batting. And then I would use the other piece and I'd be able to fold it in to create a binding. And because I've cut all my pieces with this extra inch all the way around, I don't have to decide now which piece is going to be used for my binding. I got this idea when I was stitching these smaller squares. Now these ones don't have a backing, but it's one piece of fabric where the batting is slightly smaller than the piece of fabric. So I put these together and I just began stitching. And it was a really fun project to stitch these small squares. I'm going to put a link in the description to that video so you can see that project come together. It's slightly different than this one because this one is quilt as you go. So now I have these squares all ready to stitch when I have some free time. I'm using this pearl cotton size eight in this light turquoise color. I felt like this thread went really well with the three colors that I have. This rusty red, this pale blue, this rich earthy brown. And this is going to be a great project that's all ready for me to just grab and stitch. Here are the results of the stitching that I've done on these squares. Really, really simple. Plus signs, large and small, and some French knots. So on the back, this looks quite a bit different than it does on the front. And then what I've done for most of the squares is I ended up doing a running stitch in circles or spirals. Some of them more rounded, some of them more square shaped. For this you can start in the middle or you can start on the edge and work your way in. This one I did in a circular spiral. I started in the middle and I wanted to show how I remove the basting stitches. I take the back end where the eye of the needle is and I start to pull out the stitches one by one. As long as they aren't caught in one of the slow stitches, it pulls out really easily. So here's this piece. You can see the back and the front are very similar. And that means I can decide what my front is and what my back is. And then I can also decide which side will have the binding on it. And once I've decided that, I can cut away the fabric from the part that I want to be the front. So here I've cut away the brown fabric and that's gonna be my front and the blue fabric is going to be my binding. So the way that I did this is I took the piece that I want to be the front, I decide what my front is and flip it over. So now I have the back side facing me, I fold it back and I'm going to cut away the piece that's going to be my front. I used a rotary cutter for this and a ruler, but you could also use scissors and snip right along the line where the batting is. So I want to show you the double fold method that I'm using to bind these pieces. So what I'm going to do is fold up the edge 
right up to where the batting is. And then I'm going to fold it a second time right up on to that front piece of fabric. And then that's going to be stitched down. For the corner, it's a little different. I'm going to create a miter. If you haven't done this before, it's similar to wrapping a present where the corner piece is tucked in at an angle. And then the next side can be folded twice, first up to the batting and then up onto the front. And you can see the diagonal line of the mitered corner here. I'm going to go into detail showing how I clip and hand sew this. But first, I want to mention that this binding doesn't have to be on the front. It can also be on the back. When the binding is on the back, it creates a nice clean edge. This piece is all one color, and then there's a contrasting color from the binding. So this is actually my back, and the other side is my front. Okay, now let's get back to the folding and the clipping. So we're going to fold the fabric twice. I'm going to have my binding clips handy for this to hold the folded fabric in place until I'm ready to stitch it. So I fold it once and twice. And then I'm going to take a clip to hold it in place. And then I'm going to move along and place another clip until I get to the corner to fold my miter. So you can see my folded fabric is there. And I'm going to take the corner and fold it up right to my batting. And then I'm going to start working on my next side, folding it once and then twice. And that's going to bring up the other edge of that corner. And it's going to create that nice diagonal line. And I'm going to place a clip right at the corner to hold everything in place. And then I can continue with my folding and my clipping. An optional step here, before you fold your mitered corner, is to clip some of the fabric away at the corner. I like to do this because it reduces bulk, but I don't want to cut too close to where my batting is, because then I won't have enough fabric to create my mitered corner. So I make sure only cut a small amount of that corner off. So I'm going to clip diagonally, and remove that corner piece, and then I can go back and fold my mitered corner just like before. The only difference is that there's less fabric. So I'm going to take that corner and fold it up to my batting. And then I'm going to start on my other side and fold it once and twice and bring that corner up. There's less bulk there. And one of the things that I do is I don't clip my entire piece. I just clip one corner at a time. I clip before and after the corner. I stitch and then I do another set of clipping. I want to show what the completed binding looks like. So you can see the mitered corners and the edges. Now I've used the same light blue thread to stitch this. You might want to use a matching color thread so that your stitching doesn't show. It's totally up to you. It depends on the look that you're going for. I decided to use the light blue so that my stitching would show up more. Okay, now it's time to stitch the binding. So I have my one corner clipped with my clips before and after the corner. I have a piece of thread. I've tied a knot at the end and I'm going to hide my knot. So I'm coming in where I know that that binding is going to cover up the knot. I put my needle through and I pull. There's my knot and I know that when I finish, when I come around and I finish, that knot's going to be covered. And then I take my needle and I go down into the main piece and I come up in my binding. This is just one way to stitch on a binding. This is the way that is the most comfortable for this double gauze that I'm working with. So I go down into the brown and I come up into the blue of my binding. I go down into my brown right below where that stitch came out. I move ahead and bring out the next stitch and I work that way all the way along. I just keep going until I get to the corner. And one thing that might be important to note is that your needle can come through all the way to the other side. You can see there a little bit of metal for my needle is showing. So that stitch is going to show on the other side. So if you don't want that to happen, you can back the needle out and just go into the batting, but not all the way through to the back. 
So I can come back in and just make sure that I'm going through the top layer. And I remove my clip as I come up to it. And I'm using my thumb to hold down that binding. And I'm going to stitch my way all the way to the corner. Now this is how I stitch the mitered corner. I come right up to the corner with my stitching. And I go down into the brown and I come up right at the corner there, the very top of that miter. And then I'm going to stitch all the way down that diagonal line. I'm going to move the fabric around slightly to make sure that it's exactly the way that I want it. You have some wiggle room to do that. And then I'm going to go up into that corner. So I'm catching one side and then the other. I'm going down and then coming up into the fold. I'm going down right beside the fold and then coming back up into the fold. I take a stitch and I'm going to do that right until I get to the very tip of that mitered corner. Then what I'm going to do is take a final stitch in that corner to secure it. Then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to put it inside to travel that thread right out to the edge, bringing that out. And then I can continue on my next side. I'm going to take a stitch down into the brown and come back up in the blue. And I can take a few more stitches until my thread is starting to run out. So I'm going to show how I end my thread and knot it and hide it underneath the binding. So I'm going to remove the clip and I'm going to fold back that binding. I'm going to bring my stitch out into that brown and I'm going to tie a knot. Then I'm going to take another stitch to pull that knot in and I'm going to clip it off. So this knot is going to be hidden by the binding. So now I'm going to start with a new length of thread. I've knotted the end and I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the beginning. I'm going to come back right where I've knotted off and I'm going to start a new length of thread underneath that binding and I can bring that out, make sure everything's folded the way I want it. And I'm going to take a stitch into the blue and continue down into the brown and out into the blue. And I'm going to move my way along until I get to the next clip. And you can see there in the corner of the screen, I haven't folded up any further than that. So I will pause and I will do some more clipping. I'm going to fold that corner up right to the batting. And then I'm going to fold once and twice. I'm going to place a clip just beyond where my corner is and I'm going to fiddle with that fabric and place a clip right on that corner. Then I can continue stitching. I'm going to remove that clip and continue stitching right down to my next corner. And I'll show one more time how I stitch the mitered corner. I go in with the stitch, make sure I'm coming out on the fold and I go below the fold and into the fold, stitching it down until I get to the very corner. I take a stitch at the corner to secure it. And then I push my needle through. I hide it and bring that thread out right at the edge. And then I continue stitching. So I'm going to do that on my two remaining sides and I'm going to come back and finish where I started. So this is my final corner. I have a couple more stitches to take till I get right back to that beginning point. And hiding my knot here is very similar to before. It's not as easy to fold back the binding. So I'm going to take these stitches right at the edge. And I'm going to go back and forth with my thread to bury it. So I've gone past where I've begun now. I'm going to take a very small knot and then I'm going to pull that knot through 
and it will disappear. And then I'm going to put my thread in the other direction, pull it through, and then snip it off. So I went back and forth three times. So there my binding's complete. So here is the piece where I have put the binding towards the back. So I have a solid color there. And for the other pieces, I've done all my binding stitches. This was a great project to work on, on the go. There's lots of options about what you can do with your completed squares. You could make these smaller and they could be little coasters. And you can also stitch them together. I've decided that I wanna make a fold over pouch with these squares. So to do that, I'm going to stitch four squares together. I'm gonna to start with these two squares and I'm gonna stitch them together before stitching the other two. So I'm gonna place them right sides together and I'm gonna stitch right along that line. I've chosen a thread that I think matches with the colors that I'm using. It's a brownish red. Some of that stitching may show through. So I wanna choose a coordinating color. To stitch these together, I'm not gonna knot the end of my thread. Instead, I'm gonna come up an inch to an inch and a half away from where I wanna start, and I'm starting at the corner. So I'm putting my needle in, and I'm coming up at the corner, pulling my thread through, and I'm leaving a small tail, and that's gonna be snipped off later. Then I'm going to take a stitch right where I came out. You can go through and make this a knot, or you can just take one or two stitches and tighten them to secure your thread. I'm gonna hold these together and I'm gonna stitch from the burgundy through to the brown. I'm taking my first stitch into that brown to connect the one I came up with. And now I'm going to begin my stitching from the burgundy through to the brown and I'm pulling the thread. And I'm gonna stitch that way all the way down. This is just one type of stitch you can use to connect to. You can use whichever one that you prefer. Another stitch that's very similar to this whip stitch is a blanket stitch. The difference with that would be that when you come up, you're going to allow a loop to be formed. So what that means is the thread is going to be behind your needle. So when you come up, you're making a loop just like that. I'm not doing that here. I'm making sure that my thread doesn't wrap around my needle. And so instead I'm creating this whip stitch. Either one's fine, whichever one you prefer. I'm gonna stitch this way all the way to the end. And now that I'm at the end, I'm gonna stitch right to the corner. I'm going to take a couple of stitches very close together. And for my final stitch, I'm going to create a knot. So I'm going to come up and then I'm gonna bring my needle back through before I tighten down that stitch to create a small knot. And then I will tighten that. And then with the thread that's left on my needle, I'm gonna go back and forth a few times. So I'm gonna push my needle through beneath the fabric and into the batting and pull it out an inch or so away. And you can even go back in the other direction again, do that same thing, bury that needle, pull the thread through, and then you can snip it off. And I'm also gonna snip off the thread where I started, that tail that's going to be hanging at the beginning, and there's my whip stitch all the way along that piece. And it's fairly invisible. You can see some of the stitches depending on how far you went through, but it's a very nice join. So I'm gonna do that same thing with two more pieces. I'm gonna place them right sides together, sew them, and then I'm gonna take my two sets of two, place them right sides together, and stitch them together to make four. So here I've stitched my second two together, so I'm ready to place them on top of my first two and stitch all the way along. At this point, things are getting larger and just holding with my fingers is becoming more difficult. So I'm gonna bring out clips and I'm gonna clip once in the middle. I'm gonna make sure everything lines up really nicely in the center there before I place my clip. And I'm gonna add a couple of more clips to keep everything together. And then I'm gonna do the same procedure, stitching those together. I'm gonna take one more look and make sure 
that I have those four squares laid out the way I want them and it looks good so I'm ready to stitch that long line. So now I've stitched that long line. So I have all four of my squares together. It looks good from the back and the front. So now I'm ready to take this piece and create my folded pouch. So to do that, I'm gonna fold in the corners and I'm gonna stitch on two sides. One side I wanna leave open. That's gonna be the opening for my bag. So I have to choose which side I want to be my opening. I think I want it to be this side, so I just need to stitch two sides of that triangle. So this is the first side that I'm going to stitch right along where they meet. So to do that, I want to turn it inside out and match up those sides, and I'm going to stitch right along there like I did before. If it's awkward, I can place clips there. I'm going to start the end where it's joined and work outwards to the edge. So now I've done that, that stitch together. I can flip it out and have a look at it, make sure that it looks good, and I'm liking the way that that looks. So now I'm going to fold up my other side, make sure that I'm still happy with everything. So I just need to stitch one more piece together, this line right here. So I'm going to flip it inside out again and stitch that final line. So here it is, all stitched, so I can turn everything right side out. And there's my pouch. I really like the way that this looks. So there's a couple of ways you can add a closure. You could put a button there and you can decide how far you want that flap to come down. You could make it so it just matches exactly or you could fold it down like this. And I think I like the way that this looks. So I've decided that I want to put a snap there. So I'm going to hand stitch these snaps on. Now these snaps have a hole in the middle. So it's helpful to know that you can use a pin to line things up. And that's one way to make sure that your snap's gonna be exactly where you want it. So here is my piece, completely stitched. There's my snap. There's the inside of the bag. I like the size, I like the feel of it. I'm gonna be able to use it for so many things. I hope this inspires you to create your own pouch from squares. And if you haven't already, to try Quilt As You Go, to create your own binding from a backing, and stitch it all together to make your own signature bag. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stitching.